Today, we enter into Holy Week. That fountain which waters and gives life and beauty to every other week of the year. And there are so many ways to enter into this week to appropriate it, um, to claim its power. One might sort of enter in through an evangelical fervor of immersing yourself in scripture. Uh, you might be more attuned with a holiness tradition of uh, repentance and getting your life in a right relationship with God. We might enter it through a service uh, of social action and justice work. And you heard in our announcement, there are plenty of opportunities for us to do that uh, this week even. Um, but I would hold that the key which uh, most unlocks and up the power and the depth and the mystery of this week comes from the contemplative tradition. And don't get me wrong, that's not to stand in contradistinction to action in the world and social justice because it in fact feeds and nurtures that. And I'll say a little bit more about that later. Uh, it's been said that the aim of the contemplative tradition is intimacy with God. Just as we seek to be alone with the people in our lives with whom we're most intimate, so we must find time and space to be alone uh, with God if we wish to truly share intimacy with the divine. You know, as we hear all the stories of scripture telling us how Jesus taught the multitudes and healed the sick and righted wrongs and reached out to others, we often forget or sometimes just ignore all the references to Jesus going apart to a lonely place by himself to be alone with God in prayer. It was that intimacy with God that empowered everything else in his ministry. It was that intimacy that allowed him to speak of God as Abba, which we love these days to translate as, uh, as daddy, that intimate familial term. Now today, uh, in the passion narrative that we just heard read, we've heard the formative story of our faith, or at least part of it. Good Friday, we'll hear the whole thing sung to that, that beautiful chant. Uh, but today we, we heard the, the, um, the crux of it, so to speak. Had we begun a little bit earlier in the story, we would have been reminded after how after the Last Supper, Jesus took uh, the disciples and went out to the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, I assure you, Jesus was a busy man. But before the betrayal, before the trial, before the mockery and beating, before the agony and death, Jesus made sure that he found quiet, alone time with God in prayer. The disciples, perhaps like most of us, found that at the end of a long and stressful day, they were just too tired to pray. They needed sleep. And I'm sure Jesus needed sleep as well on that night. But sleep was not going to get him through the ordeal he was about to face. Only intimacy with God would do that. An intimacy based on honesty. Lord, if possible, let this cup pass from me. And one based on faith. Nevertheless, not my will but yours be done. You know, all the great spiritual leaders of our time uh, have been grounded in this intimacy with God. Martin Luther King Jr. spent time on the mountaintop. Mother Teresa of Calcutta began every day 
of her life with mass and prolonged meditation before the grueling hours of service to the poorest of the poor and the sick in India. Archbishop Desmond Tutu of South Africa is a third order Franciscan, which means he has a rule of life that forms his spirituality into this intimacy with God. Mahatma Gandhi, the Dalai Lama, they all has centered their lives around this intimacy with God. So why is it that we spend so little time and effort in the one thing that all God's luminaries deem essential? Perhaps we're just too busy. Perhaps we have a lot of responsibility. Perhaps we're too tired. The irony, of course, is that by neglecting our spiritual health, we become uh, less efficient, more overwhelmed, and more tired than if we created and devoted ourselves to finding time and space for God. You know, sometimes our lifestyles might uh, require us to, um, to miss a meal. I mean, things get busy sometimes and you just don't have time. But I guarantee you that if we never stop to feed ourselves, our bodies will fall apart. And so it is with our spiritual health. Jesus asked one thing of the disciples as, the, uh, as, the, as his passion began to unfurl. And that was to watch and pray. And Jesus asked the same of us in this Holy Week. Our uh, opening prayer in the Palm Liturgy suggested as much when it said that we enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby God has given us life and immortality. Holy Week is a time of intimacy. It's really a date with God, if you will, it needs to be uh, in our date books, uh, on our iPhones. This week is our time with God. And each of us in our own way need to find ways to watch and pray. It may be different for different ones of us. It might mean making an effort to, to be present at Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Vigil liturgies. It might mean taking a whole hour sometime in those three holy days uh, at the little prayer altar we've created in our homes to picture ourselves being with Jesus in Gethsemane. It might mean just finding moments each day for quiet reflection or prayer or singing. It might mean taking a walk in the park or on a trail, a hike with uh, attentive, heartfelt presence. But whatever it is we may do, God wants but one thing of us. That still small place that our God wants to be intimate with us. And you know what? As we find ourselves creating and being open to more intimate moments with God, we will discover that all these other aspects of our spirituality begin to deepen. We will naturally be drawn to more to immerse ourselves in the evangelical appropriation of scripture. We will find ourselves naturally wanting to repent of our sins, to get our lives more in holy accord with God's will for us. We will find ourselves being driven to the needs world in terms of social action and doing justice. We will find all aspects of our spiritual life intensified and more balanced. In the midst of our busy and hectic lives, if we watch and pray, we will indeed find the mystery of this Holy Week, the opening up of the Sacred Heart of God.